Good morning. Today I want to talk about time travel and timelines. I believe I may have received some special knowledge which could actually come from the future, from a time beyond that of the legendary time traveler John Teeter, who supposedly came from the year 2036. More on this later. Yes, I know some of my ideas here may sound crazy to many who listen to this, especially for the first time. But please bear with me, and you may learn something. At the very least, you will begin to think differently about time and how time travel might work. And perhaps you will come to think that time travel is possible. Let's start with the most famous paradox involving time travel, which is called the grandfather paradox. Here's how it works. Suppose someone had access to a time machine, and they went back in time and killed their own grandfather. And that was at some moment before the grandfather met the grandmother. As a result of that premature death, one of the time traveler's parents would never have been born. So then how could the time traveler even be alive without a parent? That's the paradox. What will happen to a person whose parent never existed? There is a solution, however, to this famous paradox, and here it is. As soon as an interference like that happens, which sets up the apparent paradox, the old timeline becomes split, and the time traveler cuts himself off from his original time. So he will strand himself and get stuck on a new parallel timeline that was created through his interference. He will not be able to go back to his original timeline because the future in which he has in which he was born has now been extinguished by the murder of his grandfather. In effect, he becomes a time traveler from a different timeline who committed a murder and is now living a life, a new life, in a timeline without his grandfather, as a mere visitor to a place where his grandfather did not survive. Now there's a second sort of paradox which we can think about, and I'll call that the rescued grandmother paradox. This one involves an inventor who cannot exist without a rescue in his past. Imagine a person who invents a time machine. Suppose this person had grown up hearing stories from his granny about how when she was a teenager, before she met his grandfather, that she had been rescued by a strange man, perhaps one in an odd-looking machine. Now our wise time traveler might realize that he has a duty to fulfill. He must build a time machine and use his machine to go back into time and save his own grandmother. With the legacy of stories from his grandmother and some careful research, and perhaps some trial and error, he may soon find the exact moment in the past where he must arrive and make the fateful rescue. Now, once he has fulfilled his duty, he assures the survival of his grandmother and allows her to live on to meet his grandfather. From that union, one of his parents will be born, and he too. Where's the paradox? Well, I suppose there isn't one, so long as he does actually go back in time and rescues his grandmother. Provided the tra time traveler uses the time machine to make the rescue, then there isn't a paradox. He has simply used his time machine to confirm history. But if his time machine doesn't work, or if he doesn't go back to that time, but his grandmother is still rescued by someone who looks exactly like the grandson, then there is a paradox. Who did the rescue? Well, I suppose the paradox could be resolved if a double ganger from another timeline makes the rescue. 
but that solution just makes the story more complicated. The point of these two examples is there are two ways that time travelers can inter interact with the past. One is they can confirm a timeline, as with the grandmother, and the other is they can disrupt the timeline and bring a new event along that wasn't in the original history, as with the grandfather paradox. The disruptive event can only work if the timeline splits. Then history and timelines can maintain their integrity. I have provided two different stories about timelines, and I have much more to add, but I do not know how much interest there is in this material presented in this simple way. So I'm going to put this video up on YouTube and see what sort of reaction it gets. If the reaction is positive enough, I will continue and make more of these videos. As the series develops, I will eventually get into the message that I have received, which I think may have come from the future. But before telling that story, I need to give some background and establish the context. That's what these videos will do. I also think they will be interesting and informative in their own right. Please let me know if you agree. Thanks so much for listening.